Today I'm actually going to be going over the James Traficant U.S. Bankruptcy speech. And I'm just going to read straight through it. And I might do another video breaking it down, but today I'm just going to read straight through it, okay? So everybody has an understanding of what's going on today. And it's a little bit of self-study for myself. And I'm just sharing it with the viewers. All right, so let's start it off. So again, this is the James Traficant speech. Can you guys see it? Um, James Traficant's U.S. bankruptcy speech. And this is the bankruptcy of the United States, okay? So if anybody is unclear, just let you know the United States is bankrupt, a.k.a. B -b 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 broke! All right? Okay, so I'm going to continue, and I'm just going to read straight through it. It's four pages, uh, so just bear with me. All right. James Traficant, U.S. Bankrupt Speech. Somebody calling me. I'll get back to that. The Bankruptcy of the United States. United States Congressional Record, March 17th, 1933, volume 33, page H-1303. Okay, so that's for your reference if you want to look this up. Don't believe me? Research. Look it up yourself. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's how it works, y'all. All right, Speaker, Representative James, excuse me, James Traficant Jr., Ohio, addressing the House. All right. Mr. Speaker, we are now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in world history, the U.S. government. We are settling, setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say it's a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. It is established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved, okay, dissolved, by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9th, 1933, 48 stack, one, public law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent. H.J.R. 192, 73rd Congress, M. Session, June 5th, 1933, joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause dissolved the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States government offices, officers and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. The receiver, excuse me, the receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers. With the constitutional Republican form of government now dissolved, the receivers of the bankruptcy have adopted a new form of government for the United States. This new form of government is known as a democracy. Being an established socialist slash communist order under a new governor for America. This act, was a, this act was instituted and established by transferring and or placing the office of the Secretary of Treasury of that of the governor of the International Monetary Fund. Public Law 94-564, page 8, section H.R. 13955 reads in part, the U.S. Secretary of Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. Gold and silver were a such, excuse me, gold and silver were such a powerful 
money during the founding of the United States of America, that the founding fathers declared that only gold and silver coins can be money. I repeat that. Gold and silver were such a powerful money during the founding of the United States of America that the founding fathers declared that only gold and silvers can be money in America. Since gold and silver coinage were heavily inconvenient for a lot of transactions, they were stopped in banks and a claim check was issued as a money substitute. People traded their coupons as money or currency. Currency is not money but a money substitute. Redeemable currency must promise to pay a dollar equivalent in gold or silver money. Redeemable currency must promise to pay a dollar equivalent in gold or silver money. Federal Reserve notes, FRNs, make no such promise and are not money. A Federal Reserve note is a debt obligation of the Federal United States government, not money. The Federal United States government and the U.S. Congress were not and have never been authorized, point, by the Constitution for the United States of America to issue currency of any kind but only lawful money, gold and silver. It is essential, somebody call me, it is essential that we comprehend the distinction between real money and paper money, okay? Substitute, excuse me. One cannot get rich by accumulating money substitutes. One can only get deeper into debt. We the people no longer have any money, okay? We the people, we no longer have any money. Most Americans have not been paid money for a very long time, perhaps not in, even in their entire lifetime. Now do you comprehend why you feel broke? Now do you understand why you're bankrupt along with the rest of the country? Federal Reserve notes, FRNs, are un signed checks written on a closed account. FRNs are an inflatable paper system designated to create eight, debt inflation, devaluation of currency. When there is an e increase, excuse me, of the supply of money substitute in the economy without a corresponding increase in the gold and silver backing, inflation occurs. Inflation is an invisible form of taxation that irresponsible government inflict on their citizens. The Federal Reserve Bank, who controls the supply and movements of FRNs, has everybody fooled. Cuckoo. They have access to unlimited supplies of FRNs, paying only for the printing costs of what they need. FRNs are nothing more than a promissory note for the U.S. Treasury Secretary's T-bills, a promise to pay a debt to the Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve Bank. Excuse me. Oops. There is a fundamental di difference between paying and discharging, okay? Pay attention, I'm gonna read that again. There is a fundamental difference between paying and discharging a debt. To pay a debt, you must pay with the value or substance. Example, gold, silver, barter, or commodity. With FRNs, you can only discharge a debt. You cannot pay a debt with a debt currency. You cannot service a debt with a currency that has no banking in value or substance. No contract in common law is valid unless it involves an exchange of good and valuable consideration. Unpayable debt transfers power and control to the sovereign structure and has no interest in money, law, equality, excuse me, equity, or justice because they have so much wealth already. Okay, pay attention. Pay attention. The Federal Reserve System is based on the canon law and the principles of sovereignty protected in the Constitution of the Bill of Rights. In fact, the international bankers use a canon law trust as their model, adding stock and naming it joint stock trust. The U.S. Congress had passed a law making it illegal for any person to duplicate a joint stock trust in 1873. 
The Federal Reserve Act was legislated post facto to 1870, although post facto laws are strictly forbidden in the Constitution. The Federal Reserve System is a sovereign power structure separate and distinct from the federal United States government. The Federal Reserve is a maritime lender and or a maritime insurance underwriter to the federal United States operating exclusively under Admiralty Maritime Law. The lender or underwriter bears the risk and the maritime law compelling specific performance in paying the interest or premiums are same. Assets of the debtor can be hypothecated to pledge something as a security without taking possession of it. As security by the lender or underwriter, the Federal Reserve Act stipulated that the interest on the debt was to be paid in gold. There is no stipulation in the Federal Reserve Act for ever paying the principal. Hypothecated all property within the United States excuse me, within the federal United States of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve in which the trustee stockholders had legal title. The U.S. citizen tenant franchisee, okay, the U.S. citizen tenant franchisee was registered as a beneficiary of the trust via his or her birth certificate. In 1933, the Federal Reserve the federal, excuse me, United States hypothecated all of the present and future properties, assets, and labor of their subjects. The 14th Amendment U.S. citizen to the Federal Reserve System. In return, the Federal Reserve System agreed to extend the federal United States corporations all the credit, money, substitute. It needed like any other debtor, the federal United States government had to assign collateral, collateral to security to their creditors as a condition of the loan. Since the federal United States didn't have any assets, listen to this, they assigned the private property of their e economic slaves, the U.S. citizens as collateral against the unpayable federal debt. They also pledged the unincorporated federal territories, national parks, forests, birth certificates, and nonprofit organizations as collateral against the federal debt. All has already been transferred as payment to the international bankers. Unwittingly, America has returned to its pre-American revolution feudal roots, whereby all land has, all land, excuse me, is held by a sovereign and common people had no rights to hold a lodeo property. Once again, we the people are the tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property. Check it out. We the people are the tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of federal bank. We the people have exchanged one master for another. Side note, they stole our land and now they making us pay to stay. Unwittingly, America has returned to its pre-American revolution feudal roots, whereby all land is held by a sovereign and the common people had no rights to a loyal title and property. I already read this. I'm going to read it again. Once again, the, we the people are the tenants and sharecroppers renting our own property from a sovereign in the guise of the Federal Reserve Bank. We the people have exchanged one master for another. That was very important. That's why I read it again. This has been going on for 80 years. 80 years. The informed knowledge of the American people without a voice, without a voice, presenting loud enough. Now it's easy to grasp why America is fundamentally, fundamentally bankrupt. This has been going on, excuse me, I read that. Why do more people own their properties outright? Why are 90% of Americans more mortgaged to the hilt and have little or no assets after all debts and liabilities have been paid. Why does it feel like you're working harder and getting less and less? We are reaping what has been sown and the results of the harvest is a painful bankruptcy and a foreclosure painful bankruptcy and a foreclosure on American property, 
prestigious liberties, liberty, excuse me, and a way of life. Few of the elective representatives in the United in Washington, D.C., have dared to tell the truth, okay? They, they don't want no smoke, so they be lying. The f federal United States is bankrupt. The federal United States is b -b 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 bankrupt. Our children will inherit this unpayable debt, not mine, and the tyranny to enforce paying it. America has become competent completely bankrupt in world leadership, fact, financial credit, and its reputation for courage and human rights. This is an undeclared economic war, bankruptcy, and economic slavery of the most corrupt order. Wake up, America. Wake up. Wake up. Take back your country. I don't have no mic, so I just dropped the paper. All right, so again, that's the James Trafficking U.S. Bankruptcy.